To introduce yourself, I'm Simon Pomeroy, the owner of Palatrax. The whole point of this video and the introduction to now what will be called Catchmore TV is basically a series of films now and going for many years into the future, we hope, of explaining A, how we use our tactical approaches within Palatrax, but also how we catch other spe species. So whether it's rud fishing or carp fishing or shark fishing or whatever, we will ultimately have films in those areas. At the moment, we're predominantly going to be concentrating on coarse fish in the UK and in Europe. So a lot of action on carp, barbel, tench, bream, all those kind of fish. And those are the kind of films that we'll be doing. And the purpose of Catch More TV is basically one of the things I think we're missing is to really genuinely help people to see the diverse species that we've got out there, but also to actually how easy they can be to catch. Um, how simple tactics far, far outweigh some of the complex tactics that we see nowadays. I think it's going to be genuinely exciting. It's a journey for all of us. It's not being done. We're not, I don't believe the angler is really being shown in many situations how to tactically correctly catch fish. Products were designed to do one thing to help us all catch more fish and in a safe manner, a fishery environment. So we're using baits and tactics that embrace nature. There, there is no negative towards it. So we've come to the wonderful Horseshoe Lake in Lechlade, the Carp Society's premier water, and it's a Palatrax associated fishery. We've got a team of anglers who fish with Palatrax. They're friends of Palatrax as well, which is what it's all about, friendship and angling and the environment. It's, it's, it's a great combination. We have Ross from the company Fisheries in the Sky. He's doing all of our camera work. He does the underwater stuff. He does the drone. You know, he really embraces, he's, he's got a master in uh, wildlife filmmaking. He's worked for the BBC and Sky Sport. So we've got a great person in that. The idea now is in essence to shoot a load of small films to show you some of our products, some of the products that we really are trying to get pushed across. It's been de very, very difficult for us to break through into what I would call the mass market as the modern media hasn't really embraced a lot of what we've been doing. You know, we've caught so many record fish. It's been very difficult for us to literally re reach the mass angler. So we've all come to this wonderful fishery to basically put the products through their paces. The idea is to have a few of us fishing in the background, but the main concentration will be on the products to try our best to explain them through film on the one, two, three kind of steps to get the best out of them and to see at the same time that they actually do work. You know, we've got to fingers crossed any water. This isn't an easy water. It's been fishing quite hard lately, but we're always confident when we come to these fisheries because the tactics and the baits and things we use and the manipulation of them on the day really do give us those true advantages. We want to be fishing in the surface. We will have something there to do it. It's really an exciting time for us now as the company's growing, as more and more anglers are embracing. We've got fisheries all over the world coming on board because of what we're doing. Um, exciting times and hopefully you'll come along on that journey with us and you'll tell us what you want us to film. You'll ask us to highlight species or fisheries you might know about. We're there, we're just fellow anglers like you. We're at the end of the phone or an email or a message or a Facebook, anything like that. Just feel free to contact us to say, we will do this filming and we just want us to all enjoy it. We want to be able to help anglers catch more fish. We honestly believe we'll know we'll be able to quite simply tell you how to use some of these tactical approaches that I promise you that it will genuinely revolutionise your fishing and that's a promise. One common denominator between Palatrax and all other fishing tackle companies is that we don't use a lead weight in our fishing. We use a natural stone weight. And there's a whole host of reasons why we use this. The main thing is basically that anything man-made you use and you fish with, the fish have the ability to be wary of it. Look at the match angler, they will scale down. If you're going to use a large piece of lead, you have to understand that fish have the ability to be aware of it, be cautious of it, and ultimately potentially spook away from it or change their feeding habits. By using a natural stone, it's just part of their environment. Now the beauty of it, not just as it uses a standard weight, a two ounce weighs two ounces and you'll cast like a two ounce lead as long as it's not some crazy kind of different shape. Now, in shapes, we could go to another story. We do use flat shapes when we're fishing in the margins and fishing in rivers the whole bottom. But predominantly, obviously, we use a stone that will cast and do the job as a lead would have historically done. And that is the only thing, or well, the only advantage of a lead weight is it is the physical weight which actually casts and therefore holds your bait in position. 
Now, by using a stone, it does exactly the same thing. There is an element of criticism out there. Um, basically, people will say to you, it doesn't cast. Well, I can promise you, and we'll prove that, it does cast. But also, the fact is that it's bigger than a lead. Now, not in a fish's environment. A large lump of rock is nothing compared to an unnatural piece of lead. Now, what you've got to think about with lead as well is the fact that fish have the ability not just to sense it because it's the largest piece of terminal tackle, but they all have the ability to sense it because it's made of lead. Lead is a natural toxin. If you leave lead in water, nothing will grow on it. That's fact. You can bring up lead ingots from shipwrecks from centuries ago. Nothing lives on it. So therefore, we have to appreciate and understand the fact is that na nature has the ability to sense a lead, not just because it's large and man-made and things like that. It actually is something they can't live in, they can't live on. So again, it's almost like a double negative. We remove all of those concerns by using a natural piece of stone. Now, if you move on, the fact, yes, it uses a standard weight. Yes, it's unobtrusive because it's natural. But the, the beauty of what we do is we also use it as a method feeder because the mix just clings around it. We, we have a complete colour variation. I'll show you here. This is just some standard swivel stones. All leads basically are painted green. or you know, It's incredible that people say, we'll paint it green, it's now camouflaged. That is not how it works in the natural environment. So we're always looking for edges. And you can see here, you can literally see... There are so many different colour variations. If you want to go to that extreme and basically fit it in further, you can do that with uh, the stones. Leads are all basically just a blank canvas of black and greens or bits stuck onto it to try and actually make it camouflaged. You can't camouflage something like that. Another distinct advantage is a stone is naturally porous, and so we actually add water-based flavours, and we actually leave our stones soaking in the water. So when a fish comes into the swim, it comes in on the taste of the flavour. And believe me, this really, really does pong. And the fact is, because it's absorbing, the longer you leave them in, the more they stain with flavour. And so another distinct advantage that you'll never, ever get from a lead. And to be quite honest, we go to some extremes. In some of our syndicate lakes, which are really, really difficult, the fish are so wary, so cute, they've been pressured for years, we'll actually leave our weights into the margins, put them on a piece of line, and next time we come back in, we'll bring them in, and on the end of the line, there'll be these stones, it'll have bugs, it'll have algae, it'll have weed, all growing on our stones, our fishing weights. So we're using it for all the right reasons, whereas we just cannot honestly tell you the any advantages of lead above a stone. So it's a very, very simple ethos behind, or a philosophy behind what the stone system stands for. And obviously, because we patented the product, it doesn't fit in with the current trends in um, fishing. It, our, now, our time is now here to explain exactly why we're using stones, why they work, and I promise you why they catch us more fish. It's not rocket science. It's very, very common sense. But when you're against a trend, when all the companies are pushing lead, 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 it's always going to be a difficult one. And the beauty of now is with filming, with Catch More TV, all the things that we're doing, we'll be able to explain this in much greater detail and get it out to the masses through our website, through social media, through all the groups that are now gravitating, to, gravitating towards us, through fisheries that are literally banning lead. You know, for example, recently, the famous Gillam's Resort in, to uh, in Thailand, they've just banned for two reasons. One, the environmental implications, which I'll talk about on another short clip, but also the fact is that it's helping their customers catch more fish. It's realised very quickly when you see how many fish are coming to the stone system compared to when people are using great big lumps of lead right next to the hook bait. And it shouldn't be difficult to understand, to be quite honest. It's just out of kilter. We've all been brought up. When I was a kid, I'm now 50. When I was a kid, we were fishing small little largey bombs, really as unobtrusive as possible. Now, three, four, five, six ounce leads, it can't be, it, it can't fit in with all the fishing where we're saying on one hand, in all circumstances, bar basically the modern carp fishermen, we understand and appreciate to be unobtrusive will catch you more fish. And then you sit there with a great big lump of lead and camouflage it in human terms. It doesn't make any difference to the fish. So the stones are a, a massive, massive part of our armoury that helps us consistently catch more fish. We have the advantages of all the different things I've just mentioned, absorbing flavours, using as a method of feeding, using as a standard weight. It really, really does work. And I say, it's not some ploy, it's not some hidden agenda. We're basically taking the word weight and using it and using a product made of stone, natural weight, that will do the job. It's the same as your lead weights, but in all honesty, far, far better.
to do here is show you exactly how easy it is to set up the stone system and how efficiently you can fish very, very simply. So the first part is a hair rig. This one is the 25 pound steam link on a grips hook. So it's basically a stiff rig. It's one of my favorite rigs. And only three and a half inches in length. So very, very short in comparison to some of the, the rigs out there on the market. The second component and the main component, I would say, is your stones. And if you've seen all the things about it and why we use that stone, it's just a natural weight and invisible and undetectable in the fish's background. All you need to do is take your main line, separate the clip, and feed the tail rubber onto your main line. Now, if you want to have some tubing ahead of, behind it, you can do that as well. I'm then going to put on the actual clip, so that will go on next. Next thing is you take your hair rig and simply tie it on. A little bit of moisture as you just pull down and tighten up. And then just cut off your tag end. So basically, your hair rig, your clip. So that's all you've got. Obviously, you change your weight. You can have an inline version and go that way. This is obviously the swivel and the clip version. So literally, you're just clipping that stone on to the clip. You pull your tail rubber down and you push firmly on. Now you can either have this running, so you could put a small bead there, or in this case we're going to fish it semi-fixed. So just push into the housing. Now, if you take away the stone, as we say, and stay with us, it is just a natural stone, you can see how unobtrusive compared to a lot of the terminal tackle out there is we're fishing, we're fishing, because we're not trying to get our hook bait away from the, the worry of the fish spooking off the lead. That's why we can fish such a short hook link, and it is so much more effective. The bite detection on short hook links is, is incredible, to be quite honest, and much more consistent. So the next stage is just to put on your hook bait, and in this case, I'm using a 14 mil Crave Squab. That's the fish meals and plums, very pungent. So literally just pop on to the hair, And the next stage is just to fit on your hair stop. So that will keep the squab firmly in place. So that just slips through the hair there and that will hold it firmly in place for the cast. So in essence, that is the basic. So that's the stone system and then you have the variety. You can change that bait for what hopefully you'll find to be the best on the day. It could be meat beast, it could be jungle, it could be hydra, it could be another bait, whatever, but that's the system. Now for me to finish off this stage, I always like to give the fish, or acknowledge, should I say, the fish's senses. So I love using paste. And so I've got my harder hook bait, and I'm now just gonna wrap a fold of this soft paste around it. And what'll happen is that'll break down so quickly and basically send out the attractants and food and feeding triggers to the fish. So just push that on quite hard. And so you've basically got different breakdowns and more flavor. Now the final thing I'll do prior to casting this out will be to then soak it. So I'll just leave that, in this case again, it's the Crave liquid flavor. So I'll leave that sitting there. What I'm going to do now is make the next component part of the stone system. We really heavily use a certain, certain ground baits. They're very high tech, they're very food source. It's a big part of our fishery management scheme because it really is giving a, a massive food source into the biomass, not just the fish, the invertebrate life as well. But that, we'll make that up separately. So basically that is how easy it is. It's a hair rig, it's your stone, and then it's your hook bait. And I say we're looking at flavours, intense flavours to attract the fish to a really, really efficient catching system. Um, that's it, you can manipulate it, you can have longer rigs, but the stone is the key and some of the baits are the key, but it is very, very simple, very, very effective 
and honestly so consistent here and literally all over the world. So the next stage for me is though we have the hook bait soaking in the crave liquid, moulded with the paste around it, that's all ready to go. And you can fish it like that. You could fish it as a single hook bait in a PVA bag. That's the beauty of the stone system. It is genuinely versatile. But to be fair, my favourite way of fishing the system, and, and, and I incorporate it a huge amount of my tactics, is to use really high-tech ground baits and method mixes, incorporate them together, blend other product within their flavours, and especially naturals. As obviously, Palatrax as a brand is very focused on what fish need, want, and have to eat, and very much part of that is the natural elements. All these different waterborne species of flies and snails, and it just goes on. To be quite honest, if you picked up a book on entomology in your local library or whatever, you'll just see the thousands of different food sources that nature, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm being bomb bombarded by flies and all kinds of things. All of these have been born throughout the water column. But so here I'm just going to use some of our bloodworm and maggot crush, and as the name suggests, it's full of bloodworm and maggot, real bloodworm and maggot, not just a flavour or anything like that. So I'm just going to put a couple hundred grams into my mixing bowl. Now, next stage for me is two of my almost vital, almost go-to ingredients every time I make it up to add on top of the maggots and bloodworm. In the first place, the water fly. Now, if you think about it, or if you were to know, there's about 4,007, they reckon, different waterborne species of fly in this country, the UK alone. So a huge, huge resource. It's not just one or two flies. It's just literally thousands coming up through the water columns. In every month of the year, there's, you know, even in the depths of winter, really cold water, there's still hatches occurring. One of the biggest things we see in the UK, and I would like to think possibly throughout all of Europe, waterways and across the world, is the water flea, the Daphne. I'm going to put some of that in and mix that all up. Now the base in here is all to do with fishery management and attractant. It's got a 26% protein level, so really, really good for the biomass to eat that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. It's like your normal standard making up of a method mix. You make it slightly damp and then you let the water soak into the particles. But you just fluff it up, put enough in, mix a bit more. Now always make sure to leave a bit of excess in your bag just in case you make it too wet. We've all done it and then you've got nothing else to bulk it out and dry it out. But say I only make up small amounts at a time, just enough for my fishing within the next hour or so. And the beauty of this is not just as a method feeder, is you can boil it in as a ground bait, you can put it into a stick mix, you can do all kinds of things, but you really, really do want to make sure you mix it up nice and thoroughly, stage by stage. It's a little bit mucky, but it's certainly worth it. You've got, the end result is you've got a protein-filled nutritional package, and when we use it in the method feeder, we're literally wrapping it around. So right next to your hook bait is this great big ball of slowly dissolving food. Now, one of the things we use to make that break down quicker, if we want to, is the naturals. And with the air in the skeleton of the naturals, that creates a kind of almost, well, explosion. You know, when the air is pushing up and trying to reach the surface, it pulls through all the particles and explodes the mix. So in the winter, that's a fantastic, well, to be quite honest, I do it all the time, but in the winter it's particularly good when, you're, when it's sterile, your swim's cold, the water's cold, nothing's happening, you can actually make it happen. So I've now got a really nice consistency, and all you've got to do is squeeze it and you'll feel, it's almost like a sticky effect on it. There's no breadcrumb, there's no bulking agents, it's literally food, and food then further packed with all those natural elements. And if you want to end, add an overspray or an oil or a liquid flavour to give it again that extra boost. The next stage, and to be quite honest, it's just digressing a little bit away from the bait, is to use a piece of our dissolvable foam. Now the main reason we use this for, as I should show you now, is for totally for anti-tangle and nothing else. So all we do is just strip a slither. We don't use the whole chunk. And we just wet the back. Take our hook bait. And literally what we're going to do is just wrap around the gape of the hook. And now that cannot pull through, that can't tangle. The next stage, 
is to get some method. Now what I suggest whenever you use the method, you need to make sure that your rod's beefy enough to take it. And the good thing is I know I've got a, about an ounce and a half stone there. I'm now going to put about an ounce and a half of method mix and wrap that round that stone and the clip and everything. And just push it firmly on there. And I know if you haven't used it before, it might be passing through your mind, that isn't going to hold on that stone. I can generally promise you it will do. Now that looks really out of sorts, doesn't it, to a traditional setup. But at the end of the day, it is a trap and it's about catering for all the little pieces, thinking about all the minute detail. So we've got really efficient hook, really efficient hook link, really efficient bait. The stone is, as we know, an incredible advantage. And now pack round it, you've got a great big lump of food. And the next stage is obviously find the fish and then cast to them. I mean, location is a key element, but what you will know is you're gonna put out a really super efficient trap. And then if you're not getting pickups and you've got fish in front of you, just manipulate the bait, try Hydra, try a different flavor. That can make the incredible difference. The trap and the consistency of the trap is just so well proven, whether it's here or abroad, whatever species, it's such an incredible system to use and so actually easy. If you just look at those stages, it's literally a hair rig, a stone, a bait, wrapping the method mix around it, casting it. I'd like to say simply add water and without a doubt, you will catch fish. Um, and it will take your fishing to another level. And if you actually study it and look at it and realize it is just basically common sense. We're going intrusive. We're using high quality baits obviously put, trying to put it all the time in the right place. If we see a fish roll, we'll reel in and repack the method around it and then cast out. You see a fish roll, there tends to be more, obviously swim around in shoals. So, you know, if you do see one, it's always worthwhile ringing, reeling in, chucking it out. So what we'll do now is we'll cast out and you can just see how far on balance tackle we can cast that method ball. And when that falls down onto the lake bed or the river bed or wherever you're fishing in a canal, that will just literally present itself time and time again like that you'll end up with a small bird table of food right where your hook bait is. The fish are pulled in by all that tractant, all that real food, all that real protein content involving, you know, basically ingredients that they know to eat. Daphnias and things like that. It's part of and parcel of their life. It's what they do. It's what they feed on. It's in the water as they're swimming through the columns. You know, it's, it's almost like the basking shark or the whale shark. They'll just swim around with their mouths open and they're sucking in this protein. And we're trying to well, I suppose if you look at it, if you go back all the way to fly fishing, it's all about matching the hatch. And whether it's sea fishing, you know, you're going to use sand eels. Whether it's lure fishing, you're going to use live baits, maggots, all these things that we use, we're going to incorporate them in these formats into this really, really simple, really effective system, which genuinely will catch you more fish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just clip up just to see what kind of distance we got. As you can see, you can really push it out. I've got a crosswind. It's not the windiest day, so it's not particularly difficult casting conditions, but it's not the best. But what we'll do is we'll reel in now and see how many wraps we've got there. So that's a one and a half ounce stone with about proper, possibly about one and a half ounces of the method mix, the blood worm crush wrap around it. And so that's 16 or just short of 16 wraps, um, which basically is 64 yards. So again, yet again, prove that you can cast stones and you can cast them really, really fast as a method feeder.
So yet again, as we do the explanatory filming here at Horseshoe, uh, it really does prove how well it works. So we'll put this lovely fish back and get the rods back out and hopefully winkle a few more out. We've still got time, that's for certain. So uh, it's a happy all round. Palatrax's Hydra bait range is something I think is really exciting, has caught us literally thousands of fish. It's a range of basically sun-dried natural baits. We have four products in the range. We have the brown snails, the black snails, the water mussel and the small snails. Now all of these are packed naturally with proteins and nutrition that really do make up a big part of a fish's diet. Now, they might look, look out of sorts with what is normally seen into the trade, the paste, the pellets, the boilies, but I honestly can tell you, these are incredible hook baits. Now they're hair riggable, you can chop them down in size, you can flavour them, you can dye them, and they are so easy to use. And really, if you think about it, really common sense, the fact that you can now hair rig a really good, big, juicy, fat snail, full of its own natural nutrition, or you can tilt it and play around with it, you can colour it, and dye it a flavour that you know is really effective and again you have a balance where both nature and modern tactics dovetail and they really really do work and it's such an easy product to use whatever species we've caught fish literally everywhere massive carp and we've caught some huge carp on this and I suppose sometimes it really will look to you as out of sorts you know it really it's a bit like our stone weights to be fair you know, if you've fished on leads forever, suddenly you're fishing it on a stone. It looks out, even though it makes total common sense to do it. It's a bit like these snails. They really look strange, especially if you've fished on boilies for as long as, you know, to be fair, the industry and the sport has fished on. Suddenly to be fishing on this great big snail. But I think the best way to look at it is if you were to ask somebody outside of fishing, would you fish on a round ball of flavour or would you fish on something that the fish really do require in their night, daily diet? Anybody outside of fishing will straight away go towards a snail because to be quite honest, it is such common sense. Like I say, it's an easy range to use and I'm going to show you now in the next step of this video exactly how easy it is to make a basically a hook bait and also that can be incorporated in a load of different tactics for different species very, very easily. It's inexpensive and I can promise you really, really is seriously effective. Now these really are easy baits to use. You look at in these two examples here, I've got your brown snail and your black snail. Now they're hard, they look really unappealing, there's nothing attractive about them other than the smell. They do smell very, very distinct, both of them. So, next stage is literally putting them in water. So you put them in water, you'll see the black ones float for the time being, then they'll take in water and start to sink down. And you can literally put as many as you want, big ones, little ones, and literally you leave them in there for a few hours. In normal water temperature, you're talking about four hours. If it's colder, it'll take longer. If it's warmer, if you really want to rehydrate them so where all the water sucks all back into them and they fill out with warmer water or hot water, not boiling water, 
you can do it literally within 20, 30 minutes. Personally, I always like to use the lake water, the water I'm fishing in. We all know that fish with this high sensory perception have the ability to detect things, and we all know the kind of chemicals that are in our drinking water, so that's my preference. So they go from these, as I said, really, really solid, natural snail. Let's say, in this case, I just, I just showed you the brown snail. And so basically, they literally rehydrate totally differently than they were in their initial state of being really high. They fill back with water, they're plump, they're juicy, and they're hair riggable. You can cut them down to size and just fish them straight on a hook. So that's the brown snail version. And again, the black snail, it just plumps up, sucks back on the water. And the amount of fish we're catching of all species, you know, genuinely we've caught some real clonkers, whether it's massive carp, barb or chub, you know, it's just a protein filled packet. And we mustn't forget or dismiss what fish really eat. And it's much more common sense to sometimes put on a hair or a hook, something that is actually born in nature and that they feed on naturally. You may not, you know, you, you might be cautious, does it actually hair rig? Here's an, it's just an example. And whilst we're filming here, this is a good example of a bait that's working efficiently at Horseshoe. Brian here has already caught a number of fish using the black snails. And they just do really hair rig. Nothing, they're very firm, they're very solid. You know, they don't just fall off. It's not like um, it's going to be a problem where small fish will bite it off or pull it off. Um, that just doesn't happen. So it's really, really effective. Another particular favourite way of me of uh, manipulating the hydra, particularly with my almost go-to, the one I firstly start off with, is the brown snail, is to flavour and dye them. Now, basically, you're taking that natural mass and you're impregnating it with a flavour and dye as it basically draws in as it rehydrates. And therefore, you can make and manipulate your own bait. You can make your own flavour baits, you make your own colour baits, and you know that hook bait will have a base of really high protein, really high nutritional value. And it, again, it's really easy to, done. I mean, my favourite go-to flavour is jungle, which is tiger nut, peanut and coconut. And red and orange, bright colours, they all work differently. I don't think we'd ever, ever know really which is the best colour. It's always a case of playing and mussing around and finding it. So you literally just need some water, add some of the dye, to whatever colour you want to make it. Add your flavour. Again, it's for there for you to mess around with, finding out the levels, playing around with it, finding out something that works on that day. Just gives you another dimension. So you just literally give it a quick stir, make sure everything's mixed together. And again, the longer you leave them in there, the longer they'll stain and they'll impregnate in. And it is literally just a case then of popping a few of the different ones in. They'll all die to some extent. I would suggest you leave them for there for about 12 to 24 hours. Really let that flavor get inside there and the color to stain through. And then basically they're great hook baits. I mean, you can freeze them down or keep them cool. Obviously being a natural product, you don't want to leave them out in the sun. You know, they'll, they're like any other kind of meat. If you leave it out, it will go off. But you can freeze them, you can keep them in the fridge. They will last a long time in the fridge and obviously they'll quite happily last on the bank for about 24 hours. So an example is, these are ones I made yesterday. I'm using on the trip here. This is the brown snail, as I mentioned. So it really, really has taken on that flavor and color. It's plumped up from the hard, solid snail it was to a really, really fleshy snail full of powerful flavour, a very vivid, vivid colour, great in places like here at Horseshoe, gin clear waters, it really stands out, it's, so it's standing out on two levels, as a full of the flavour and a bright colour, bright visual colour, so through the day it's a really good option, but I say, don't ever ever be under the illusion that this doesn't work, it actually is common sense why it works, and I can promise you it really, really does. One way to really prove how much the dye and the flavours impregnate is if I just get one of the snails that's been sat there for 24 hours, 
in the dye and the flavours. If I cut him off in half, and you can see it doesn't just sit on the outside and coat it, it goes all the way through the middle. So when it gets in the water, the water ingresses and pulls everything back out again. So really high attract, bright visual, great hook bait. Grips hook design is a genuinely innovative and third hook design. We've currently got barbs and barbless, and now we've got the grips design. We've got thousands of different patterns, but only three designs. As I said, barbed, barbless, and now grips. So what's different about grips and what makes them better than the other designs that are currently available? The best way to, I think, to describe it is where the barb would normally be on a traditionally barbed hook. That's no longer there. There's a process called a cutting point, which actually flattens the point of the hook and gives it a spear-like effect, extremely sharp. And then that's where the real true benefits move to the next level with grips. What you actually have is a series of tiny, horizontal, minute grooves put into the back of where a barb would normally be. And what actually happens is this ultra-sharp hook now has these tiny little areas where when you put the pressure on a fish as you're playing it, those little grooves, the flesh of the mouth, pulls into those grooves and hold firm. And so you can fight the fish in a traditional like almost barbless, but obviously with that much more security knowing that that hook's actually held in place by these tiny little grooves. And then when you've landed the fish, the, basically the design reverts back to a barbless and just simply falls out. So it's massive benefits compared to some of the other problems that we have with the two historic designs. It's so sharp, I promise you, it's incredibly sharp. Now the genuine accolades from so many anglers, you can't deny, we've now got actually fisheries banning barbed or barbers and going grips design only. And that's how powerful a new product the grips hook design is. Now currently within the Palatrack stable of products revolving around the grips design, a series of hair rigs and sizes 6, 8 and 10 in a wide gate pattern. This is now changing. Going forward, we're so confident with this hook design, we know how good it is for the angler, how good it is for fish safety and security. It's a great product. So we've invested in basically bringing out a whole series of new patterns for different species. We should shortly have the twos, fours, twelves, fourteens and sixteens in our traditional Y-gape design. We've got catfish hooks coming through. We've got treble hooks coming through. We've got new park carp patterns coming through. It's a really exciting product. I say so once you fish on it and you see the benefits, it really is awe inspiring and genuinely innovative. Exciting times and I promise you if you try these hooks you'll so quickly see how sharp they are and how secure they hold with no mouth damage and when they release the you release the tension on the hook the hook just drops out and you can safely pop the fish back. Honestly I promise you grips will change the way you fish. Well, that's what it's all about. Screaming run on the beautiful Horseshoe Lake and one of the old warriors. Absolute stunning fish, absolute stunning fight. Again, caught on a simple stone system. This was literally three rod lengths out, probably in a bit of an area where most people you don't even drop the bait and it's hurtled off. So, a real heritage fish. So, happy days all round. We'll get her back in and see what else the session produces. but. You can probably tell by the smile on my face, I want a happy angler.
going to show you here is a 25 pound steam link rig that I really, really use effectively. It's caught me fish literally all over um, and I love it as a carp rig. It really comes into its own in certain tactical situations. So what is steam link? Steam link is basically a very, very fine Dyneema core, three breaking strains, 15, 25 and 30 pound, which we actually call snag link. And it's got a translucent coating, so it's really, really unobtrusive. Um, and what actually happens, as you'll see as the, as the demo progresses, is basically I'll make the rig up, it looks all a bit messy and horrible, and then you actually put it through the steam of a kettle and it straightens out into this really, really good, basically super efficient trap. So when I'm making this rig, and as because we're fishing the stone system all the time, we tend to fish very, very short hook links for good bite detection. We're not worried about getting our rig away from the lead and all these kind of things. So it does come off the spool and it doesn't look the most attractive, but it literally is a case of taking off 14 or so inches for this rig. You can either actually strip it back. I know you probably shouldn't do it, but I do, but you can get little stripping tools and strip off about eight inches. So all I've done is nick that and it actually comes off really, really quite easily. So the next stage, basically put a hair loop into the end of the strip section. Now when I'm, uh, I'm very, very fussy about my rigs. It is our trap. You know, we're asking an awful lot of a fish to actually hook itself. So it has to be meticulous. Look at all the other anglers, especially in the match and fly situation. It's really, really careful presentation, very neat, very tidy. So all I've done there is literally put a small overhand loop into there, and that's gonna be for my um, boilie stop later on. Now, if anybody knows me and knows how I fish, I, I don't fish with round baits. Um, I'm a real fan of the squab and obviously things like naturals. Um, but in a pop-up format, in clear waters like we're here doing the demos at Horseshoe Lake, the Carp Sartes water, gin clear during the daytime, I'm always going to look at that extra edge from a site. So it's, this is just a, literally a yellow crave flares. And as you'll see, the squab has the four corners, so much more difficult to uh, eject. And at the same time, every else around us is fishing rounds, so it's never a bad thing to do something different. Uh, and again, I'm a firm believer it gives me an extra edge. So because I'm going to make this rig, I don't just guess the length of the hair and things like that. I will actually make it like this. So I stripped it back, mounted the squab, boilie stop, basically through the loop and just pull tight. Again, most of you, if you already know us, you'll appreciate that we actually fish the grips hooks. Um, it's a third design, it's Palatrax's exclusive design. And when you come into barbers fisheries like this, um, the fisheries really like to see this. It's a very effective fish from a hooking point of view, very, very sharp, um, but at the same time, it's very, very safe um, and holds very, very firm. So whenever you're making the hair rig, you always want to be th working through the back of the eye. So you're literally going to par pass the tag end through the eye and just pull it on down. So basically you're going to end up with your hair and you can just then decide the length of your hair. Now for me, I actually tend to fish majority of times a very short hair. Um, a lot of this comes with all the fly fishing I've done. To have it too far away can give you false indication. There's a number of things. There's a number of schools of thought. It's a personal thing, I suppose. But at the end of the day, this works consistently for me. So again, always working from the back, you're now going to wrap that round. And I will literally, instead of putting um, shrink or anything like that in, I will just keep on wrapping it round. Stop every now and again just to bunch those fibres up. Keep it all nice and tight. Keep that hair lying down the back of the shank of the hook. So keep on going down and what I actually take it down is to the actual point opposite the shank. So I'm happy there again, bunch up for luck, one more turn. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it back round a couple of times to keep all that really firm. And then again, always working through the back when you're making the hair rig, put the tag end through the back, keeping it all nice and tight. And there we go. So that's actually the difficult bit done. 
And then, like I say, if you step by step here, always work through the back of the hook and things like that. Now, again, the next section for me here is, I, I very much use this as a trap. I say it's not just a standard thing. So I'm, I always use shrink. Now our shrink, if you've seen the video on that, is a very, very high shrink ratio. It really does tighten down. So I'm just gonna put a piece of shrink and let that fall down through. Now, the next stage is literally, and this is where you need to get really get your heads around this to get it right. It's so simple. So all I've done is fed the tag end through the eye of the swivel. Now it is literally an overhand loop. It's not a figure of eight, it's not a grinner or anything like that. All you have to do to finish this rig off, and I promise you this will hold. And it's because it's Dyneema basically, it really, and you just gently pull down on that. And that is it. Now to finish off, now what this piece, this now, it booms it out, this shrink tube. So again, it gives you the ability to cast and have uh, the added advantage of knowing it's not tangling, it's giving good presentation. So all I'm now gonna do is literally pull the shrink tube down over the overhand loop and push it over the eye of the swivel. So that's it so far. Very, very simple, very, very basic. But at the moment, it's not looking anything special. Now, because we're going to fish a pop-up here, I like using these tiny, tiny little non-toxic shots. They just the, An AB will just balance our 40 mil squabs perfectly. Or you've got the option, obviously, to use things like putty, but this is just the way I like fishing. So just press on down. Now, that's it. Now, the next stage to this is just literally to steam it off. So through the steam of a boiling kettle, being very careful not to get too close and get burnt, and at the same time you don't want to manage the material, just pull it through that boiling, the steam off the boiling kettle, and basically you'll get a very, very stiff to supple hinge rig. Easy to make, very, very super efficient, anti-tangle, it really, really is an efficient rig, whether it be bottom bait or a pop-up in this case. If you want to fish a bottom bait, all you literally do is take off the uh, shot and you're back onto the bottom bait. And what I'll do now is just put it into the tank so you get a better idea of the presentation. So what I'll just do is pop it in the tank and you'll see the finished rig. And I say, bottom bait or pop up. scale 20 pound on the nose using some of the tactics we're outlining in the film. Happy days.
my first ever horseshoe carp. I've waited 20 years to fish here. I've caught this today, tonight, on a double snail on Pile Tracks Stone System. I'm so excited. Absolutely over the moon. An absolute stunner. This is what I've come to Horseshoe for yet again. Look at that, a beautiful, beautiful mirror caught out of Summer Bay. Stone system, jungle pop-up, little squab flares, like a fluoro yellow. Put out over a bed of particle, and bloodworm crush, and it's hurtled off. We've had a great afternoon. We're here obviously doing a lot of other filming, showing how all the tactics work. And now we're, the cameras, well, poor old Ross has been dragged in again from the cameras behind you there um, to take a, a few shots of this absolute stunner. But it hurtled off, great fight, absolute stunner. I'm guessing it's probably one of the new stockies. Low 20, really, really happy days. Well chuffed. Any fish out of horseshoes a bonus and that's it for me, trip done.